strong, efficient, erect. That's what the rear wing of the GT3 RS is. Oh my goodness, look at the size of that thing. Damn, I love the rears of the RSs. They look so aggressive, so purposeful. And then as you swing around the side, dude, this is a good looking car. I love how this car specifically is optioned in lizard green with the RS badging at the bottom, the carbon fiber mirrors, these delicious intakes, which you know I love to fist. <laughs> Everything about the side is purposeful. It's ready to attack a track. And then as you come around the front, you encounter what is perhaps the best looking 911 front in history. I love the louvers. I love this hood with the Naka ducks that are supposed to enhance the aerodynamics of the car, but in my opinion, they just look spectacularly good. And then down here, the front fascia that has the token GT3 and RS vent. So overall, the RS is delicious. But, but guys, the 992 GT3 is the newest generation from Porsche. And you can tell right away from the front of the car that it is so much more modern. You get these two nostrils, which you can see down into a radiator. And then you have these glorious headlights with the shark blue accent surrounding the outside and this reworked front fascia, which in my opinion is actually really damn nice. I may prefer it to be painted the color of the car, but I do like it. And then as we come around the side, I love the new GT3's wheels. Those wheels are so beautiful. And I love how they optioned these shark blue accents around the wheels. And then as we come around the back, we encounter the back of this thing, which is mwah, so much more elegant and tasteful than the back of that. And I think that's a reflection on the 992 generation in general, but this swan neck spoiler is so beautiful. I love these mounts with the option to adjust the angle of the wing. Look at this. And then as you come down here, the singular integrated tail light that goes around the back of the car. And then this glorious rear diffuser that centers these two twin tailpipes. I love this car. And to be honest with you, I think that the 911 has undergone an epic evolution. But if I had to pick a favorite, I think because I'm a little kid, because I like cars that give me a little more, you know, a little more massaging, even though the back of this is nice and the 992 is beautiful, I like that better. I like the exterior of that. So let's use that as a good segue, jump into the RS and go for a little drive. Nine thousand, nine thousand, onto the brakes at one hundred and five, dude. It's so stable under braking. This thing is a car that you can exploit the shit out of on a road like this. Oh my goodness, dude! I'm taking this bend at one hundred miles an hour, and it just feels so planted. What a car! Downshift, downshift. This PDK gearbox, dude. Back to first gear. Nine thousand. I love how it kicks you in the ass on the upshift. Dude. This is a car, ladies and gentlemen. This is a car. All right, I'm white knuckling around this turn because <laughs> I'm going fast. Dude, onto the power again. Okay, what can I say about this car? Let me slow it down because I'm carrying such a nasty, obscene, disrespectful speed around these corners 110 miles an hour approaching this truck onto those delicious carbon ceramic brakes oh my god i'm out of breath and i'm sweaty what a car this is let me tell you a little bit about it well you guys know it's got the glorious four liter that's in almost every other porsche that i review it is that special it is that spectacular and the induction noise from those side intakes make it sound just that much more tasteful the engine we know but i'm not that familiar with the pdk because i drive a manual this pdk is so reactive that was two gears in a millisecond another gear another gear onto the power onto the power you see why these things are so fast why they run high 10 second quarter miles at right around 130 miles an hour. This transmission is like a cheat code. It allows you to crack off the shifts unlike anything else in the world. 
Second. Third. Onto the brakes. Onto the brakes. Okay. Well, what about these brakes? These carbon ceramics, as you guys know, are spectacular. And then we turn in. We turn into this bend. Get on the power. Oh my goodness, this chassis, this turn in, the way that this thing feels, it gives you so much confidence. I can't tell you, I can't tell this steering enough. And unfortunately, we're behind this truck and he's in the way and we have to lower our speed and our velocity, but this steering is so reactive, it makes the car feel so small. This is an order of magnitude better than my 991.1 Touring in the way it steers. It goes over bumps and gives you confidence to drive it like an asshole. You understand why this thing is so f spectacular around the Nürburgring. It's because of the confidence that it instills in the driver. And then you get on the power and then you can just take these turns at that's 60, 70, 80 onto the brakes. What the fuck? This thing is a cheat code and it's a hell of a car. So let me turn back around, get back to the GT3 and see exactly how that car is different and even how it's better. So, see you back there. Oh, what an experience. Even climbing over those 918 racing buckets, man. This thing is a riot. It's a riot. I can't express how good this car is. And it's not because of the speed or the sheer acceleration, it's because of the confidence. The fact that you can wring its neck and never feel in danger for your life, but but now guys, let's jump into this baby, the 992 and go for a drive. All right, 992 GT3, first gear, seven, eight, nine, seven, eight, nine. As I hit the clutch and shift into third with that glorious six speed. Oh my goodness. Here we go, going around this bend at 110 miles an hour onto the anchors. Dude. This thing is crazy. All right, so right away, as we slow down behind this Camry, what do I feel different? Well, let's start with the engine. The engine is identical. It revs to 9,000. It builds power in a way that provides so much satisfaction. Let me show you, first gear, 4,000 RPM. Let's ring it out to nine. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh my goodness, dude, this engine is spectacular, but it's no different than it is in the GT3 RS. But what makes this power plant or powertrain a little bit more special is the fact that we have what is perhaps the best manual gearbox in history option to this car. Not only is it notchy, not only does it go right into place, but it gives you this delicious resistance and feedback when you click it into gear. Dude, what a manual gearbox. I am in love. I am in love with this gearbox. So I'm gonna turn around here because this traffic is a bit of a bus go. Actually, you know what? <laughs> We're free bitches. Let's go. All right, so what are the main differences then? If the powertrain is really similar, why is this car different or better even than the RS? Well, <laughs> this front end is so good. It is just ridiculous. It is first and foremost so reactive. The steering is light and it's fidgety in your fingertips. It's so good. Oh my God, dude, I'm gonna cry. This is the best steering I've ever felt in my life. This double wishbone front suspension is spectacular. It's breathtaking. Oh, so much front end grip, so much front end turning. And I'm not a professional driver, but I've driven a lot of shit. And I can tell you that this is the best front end I've ever felt. And probably the best steering, even better than my 765. And I always talk about McLaren steerings being the most delicious, feel worthy, the best things to transmit, everything going onto the road. But guys, this thing, its speed, its feel, its reactivity is Picasso level. This is a legend. I can see why this was even faster than the RS around the Nürburgring. This thing is just nasty. That thing is just nasty. Oh my God, I'm in love. I'm in love with this thing. Nick, you have an amazing car. And I think the most beautiful part about this car is that you can kind of calm it down. You can dial it into comfort mode 
and the car is even more comfortable than the RS. You don't get all the little pebbles coming up and hitting the underside. You don't have all of the vibrations and awkward noises entering the cabin. No, no. You have a car that's extremely refined with a gorgeous interior, an interior that I think is so tasteful and delicious. Oh, I love it. I love it. But then, then you dial it back up into sport. You downshift a couple times with that delicious manual gearbox and you wring its neck to 9,000 RPM and go 100 miles an hour around a turn and you just get the biggest rock hard erection at 120 miles an hour in history. Then you get on those brakes and you fall in love. You fall in love. And I keep using expletives, but there's no better way to explain this, guys. This is the better driver's car. I don't know what else to say. I'm going to head back to the RS and give you guys a conclusion. So we'll see you there. Yo, what an experience. And what a crazy, crazy windy day here in Las Vegas. But holy shit, that thing is spectacular. All right, I think it's time to pick a winner. Let's start with the exterior of the cars. I think looking at it from this direction, from this angle, I think it's fairly straightforward. That's the better looking car. It looks more purposeful, more like a race car, like something way more aggressive. I love how this looks. And this is a car I would have up on a poster in my bedroom. But then, <laughs> then we talk about modernness, technology, comfort. This car takes the cake. I love how Porsche has evolved, how the 992 isn't only more comfortable, but the materials feel more technological, more premium. This interior is utterly mind-blowing. And it doesn't hurt that this car has what is perhaps one of the most beautiful wings ever fitted to any car in history. That is gorgeous. But guys, now we're going to get into the really juicy aspects of these cars. Let's talk about the powertrain. Well. The powertrain, the engine, is both the four liter flat six in both cars. It delivers identical power, and to be frank, they feel identical. So no winner there, that's a wash. But one car has a manual transmission, one has a PDK. The better transmission, hands down, is this right here. What a delicious manual transmission. So at this juncture, you're like, oh, Mickey, oh, you love both cars. No one's really winning. Well, Johnny, I'm with you. Um, here's where we get into the performance capabilities, the handling, the steering, the turn in, the front end grip. This car takes the cake. This thing is a notch above. It really is the next generation. I can't wait what the RS version of this does because this is the only car I've been able to one hand around a bend at 130 miles an hour and have confidence. I could have been sipping on a coffee while doing it. So the winner of this competition and the better driver's car in 2022 is a 992 GT3. If you guys enjoyed that video, go down below. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a subscribe and I look forward to seeing you next video. Take care.